Good morning. So good to be with you all today for a sermonic theme, and you've heard the word of God. Show and tell. Show and tell. In many schools across America, teachers have employed different activities to help engage their kids. A long time activity has been show and tell. This entails a child bringing an item from home that remains put away until show and tell time. When it's time, they get to take the item out and share it with their whole classroom. Kids can bring in all kinds of sorts of things. If they can lug it, they can bring it. Kids bring in pet turtles, model airplanes, pictures of fish they catch, stuff like that. They get to explain in their own words what it means to them. For one teacher in particular, show and tell was pretty lame until the day Erica spoke. Erica captivated the class. She stood before the class with a big pillow stuffed under her sweater and pulls out a snapshot of an infant. This is Luke, my baby brother, and I'm going to tell you about his birthday. First, mommy and daddy made him as a symbol of their love, and then daddy put a seed in my mother's stomach, and Luke grew in there. He ate for nine months through an umbrella cord. Her classmates are watching in amazement while the teacher is trying hard not to laugh. Erica continues, then about two Saturdays ago, my mother starts going, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. She walked around the house for like an hour, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. My father called the middle wife. She delivers the baby, but she doesn't have a sign on the car like the Domino's man. They got my mother to lay down in bed like this. And then, pop, my mother had this bag of water she kept in there in case the baby got thirsty. And it just blew up and spilled all over the bed like <sighs> Then the middle wife starts going, push, push, and breathe, breathe. They start counting, but, but my mom never got past 10. Then all of a sudden, out comes my brother. He was covered in yucky stuff. They said it was from the play center. So there must have been a lot of stuff inside there. Then Erica stands up after her show and tell. She takes a big theatrical bow and returns to her seat. Erica was proud of her show and tell. She was proud to show the picture of her baby brother. She beamed with pride as she took her seat. Truth is, I have noticed when folks are proud, they cannot hide it. They love to share their good news. Births and graduations, accomplishments, a new job, or a home, or housewarming, you get me. We are happy and we want to share our happiness with others. When we're feeling good, it is contagious. We share that. We want people to know when our families are doing well, when our family is in town, new love, old love, reunited love, it's getting hot in here love. As with all feelings, we share feeling good with others. It beams from our pores. I feel good. Dun -na 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 -na. I knew that I would. Dun -na 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 -na. I feel good. Da -na 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 -na. I knew that I would. Da -na 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 -na. So good, so good. I got you. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Feeling good permeates outward. This is where we enter the biblical text today. John was excited to see Jesus. John the writer, which some scholars distinguish from John the baptizer, was excited to see Jesus. A look of recognition came over him. He declares to those around him, this is the Lamb of God. This man ranks over me, your leader, after all he had done with the disciples. This man before you is highly respected. Through baptism, he is to be revealed to the world. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. The very next day, John says it again. This is the 
the Lamb of God. And two disciples, one of which is named Andrew, hung out with Jesus for the whole day. Excited. What does, what does Andrew do? He goes home and he finds his brothers and he says, guess what? You won't guess who I saw today. Simon Peter takes a few guesses. Andrew smashes it into his skin. I hung out with him all day. Not being able to contain the good news, his excitement, he shares the good news with Simon. Jesus, Jesus, Dumbo, I hung out with Jesus. See, when you have good news, you can't just keep it to yourself. The Negro spiritual says, it's just like fire. Shut up in my bones. You can't keep it to yourself. Without thinking about it or getting fearful, each of these humans did evangelism. They simply passed on the good news to the next person. They didn't threaten people with hell. They didn't shout out of a portable speaker. They didn't pass out tracks. They didn't step off some steep cliff. They didn't ask them if they had ever been baptized. They didn't even ask them if they knew where they were going to go when they die. All they did was share what they knew in their most recent experience of Jesus. They were excited. Jesus was the new one in town. They were giddy excited. And they simply, through word of mouth, publicized Jesus' arrival. They were glad to share the good news of the Messiah being around. You ever been walking down the street and you see someone famous? You get a little excited, don't you? You're minding your own business and there they are. Should I ask them for a selfie? The Pointer Sisters used to sing, I'm so excited. Y'all can sing with me. And I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control and I think I like it. Well, John is excited and he can't help but let others in by telling them the good news. He wasn't the only one who couldn't keep his mouth shut. He was so excited. Folks say he was testifying. He was willing to tell anybody who would listen. Pastor David Liu says, at its heart, evangelism is noticing what God is doing in our lives, sharing that with others, and inviting them to come see for themselves. What can you not wait to tell someone? Can you recall a time when you had such good news you leaped to share it with others? What excites you about the Bible? Your faith, your spiritual journey, how has God touched you? When was the last time you felt God's presence so strong? Or when was the last time you knew it was God in the midst of a situation? Reese Riley lives in Hopkins, Minnesota. He's a fifth grader. You know what his favorite time of day is in school? Recess! <laughs> But one day he looks up and he notices that there are these kids in wheelchairs not doing anything. It bothers him. As a kid, he could see how clearly these kids were being excluded and that just didn't sit right with Reese. And he also could see that it didn't look like they were having fun. And what's the purpose of recess? To have fun. So he and his friends started talking to their teacher and the teacher, a firm member of the Adult Society Club, says, well, it cost about $300,000 to build an inclusive playground. So she kind of did her best to squash the idea. But now the kids had an idea. And since they really didn't know the difference between 50K and 300K, <laughs> they were not all that deterred. They got excited because now they could see a positive reality for the situation. They started collecting their spare change. Well, of course, that wasn't enough. Then they had a bake sale. Of course, that wasn't enough. And then they made up flyers and went to door, door to door. That sounds like something the church could be doing, amen? <laughs> Please don't forget that we have fundraising letters out there. And there's some on the back table. And we could be kind of doing the same thing. And then guess what else they did? They started cold calling businesses and even got restaurants to donate a portion of their profits. This went on for months until last month, December, they finally reached their goal of $300,000. The money was always there. 
It just needed people who were excited about it. Jesus is still around. He just needs some folks who are excited about him already. Little kids have no problem sharing and showing and telling their excitement. The differently abled kids were touched by the concern of their classmates who were able-bodied. The differently abled kids are going to get their inclusive playground. But that's not the end of the excitement. The fifth grade class were so excited to reach their goal, they realized their possibility. So now guess what that fifth grade class has committed to do? To raise money for all the schools in their district to have an inclusive playground. People of God, are you excited? (laughs) When was the last time you got excited? People of God, I want to remind us that we too have something to be excited about. Here at United, we worship with folks we might not ordinarily worship with. Jesus brings us together to do worship, to share in community, and to make a difference in the world. All of the buildings around us on 53rd Street, and they keep changing. More and more businesses come in, and all of them want to give you a good in exchange for money. But we here at United Church of High Park seek to invite people into relationship, and we care about people's well-being. We engage spiritual content that hopefully impacts our life and our good deeds. We see with God's help the value in every single human being. And we are better because of this community than we would be without it. There are subgroups in our church that gather to meet and or experience fellowship. And what about what God is doing on each of our individual journeys? We are also a church that is working on being inclusive on multiple levels. I can't tell you how many churches exclude people for all sorts of reasons. But here at United Church of Hyde Park, we're trying to do the opposite. We're trying to include people that are young, people that are differently able, people whose sexuality is non-heteronormative. Last week, we had two people join our church, and others are expressing an interest. And I think that is something to get excited about. Last week, we talked about water and repentance and baptism and getting dunked in the river and a special appearance from God. Keeping the special appearance from God today, we get none of the other stuff from last week in the Gospel of John. Not a bleep, insert, glimpse, nada. What we get is people excited about Jesus' arrival. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control, and I think I like it. Come on now, y'all. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control, and I think I like it. The people of God in this text were excited. They are discombobulated and taken forward, anticipating all that Jesus' arrival meant for their life. John is like, hey, yo, this is Jesus. He's like telling the disciples, guess who that is? That's, that's, that's Jesus. He recognizes him. He sees him. Behold, the Lamb of God, the precious Lamb of God, born into this world that we might have a chance. The precious Lamb of God, he's our brother, and we get to be Jesus' baby siblings. And that would be enough already. Two more disciples are on the scene and they see Jesus and they get excited too. And they can't keep the good news to themselves either. Good news is infectious like that. You just can't keep it to yourself. So I'm inviting you on this third Sunday of the new year to remember or to rediscover what our good news is. What excites us about this journey And let's not sit on it, but be happy and share it and tell it and let people not be able to shut us up. How excited we are. Can't hide it. 
I'm about to lose control. And I think I like it. Amen.